Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we finally get to take a look at the very first Ryzen 8000 series powered mini PC. This is the all new GMK Tech K8 powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. So with this, we have eight cores, 16 threads. All of this is based on Zen 4, and we've also got RDNA 3 graphics along with AMD's new Ryzen AI, which offers up to 16 tops of AI performance. But in total, combining the CPU, GPU, and NPU, you can get 38 tops of AI performance out of the 8845HS. So overall, we've got a very small form factor here. I actually like the color scheme, got a really nice silver. Not overdone with RGB or anything like that. It would look really good basically on any desk. And GMK Tech will be offering this in a couple different storage and RAM variants. We're going to go over the full specs in just a second. But along with the new K8 mini PC, inside of the box, we're also going to get an HDMI cable. We've got a little bit of a bracket system here so we can mount this on the back of a monitor, TV, or even on the wall. Plus, we've got our 120 watt power supply. And this is utilizing a barrel jack. I've seen a lot of newer powerful mini PCs hit the market with USB Type-C power input. Still, I personally prefer having that barrel jack so we know we can get sufficient wattage to this chip. Now when it comes to I.O., up front here on the new K8, we have two full-size USB 3.2 ports. We've also got a 3.5mm audio jack and USB 4. This is 40 gig protocol, so connecting an eGPU or really fast storage is very simple with this new PC. Not much going on around the sides here. We've just got a lot of ventilation for this new Hawkpoint APU. And moving around back, you can see we've got another full-size USB 3.2 port. They've also added a full-size USB 2.0 port, full-size display port, HDMI, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and our power in. Not a bad choice in I.O., and I'm really glad to see that we do have USB 4 here up front, but when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is powered by the all-new AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. This is the new Zen 4 Hawkpoint APU, 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.8 GHz with a boost up to 5.1. We've got that built-in Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3 with 12 compute units, and this will clock up to 2700 MHz in the 8845HS. And one of the biggest differences between Ryzen 7000 and 8000 here is the upgraded Ryzen AI. This will do up to 16 tops of AI performance just from the NPU, but total AI performance out of the chip utilizing all of the components up to 38 tops. This will support up to 64 gigs of SODIMM DDR5 running in dual channel at 5600 megatransfers per second. It can also house two M.2 SSDs, and these would be 2280 size. With this unit here, I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte PCIe 4.0 M.2 NVMe SSD. Now, before we get into testing, I did want to give you a look at the internals here. It's actually really easy to get in and upgrade that RAM and storage. Top pops right off with a little clip system. And new to these GMK Tech Mini PCs is the cooling fan here. This will actually draw some air in to help cool that RAM and storage off. So we'll need to go ahead and unplug this. There's actually four screws that hold this down. I've already removed them just to make it a little easier. And like I mentioned, we do have two M.2 SSD slots here. I've got a one terabyte PCIe 4.0 drive in here, but we can always add another one. And this is packed with 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5,600 megatransfers per second. Of course, with these APUs, you definitely want it in dual channel. And this just happens to have crucial RAM right out of the box. Okay, so far so good. This Ryzen 7 8845HS is actually doing a really good job at the kind of wattage we have this at in this mini PC. Uh, as you can see, we've got those 8 cores, 16 threads based on Zen 4, 32 gigs of SODIMM DDR5 at 5600 megatransfers per second, and it's running in dual channel. And of course, we've got the Radeon 780M iGPU. I haven't changed anything in the BIOS and it looks like 3 gigs is already dedicated to the uh, iGPU, but you know it will allocate as much as it needs up to that 14.4 gigs right here. This just helps out applications understand that we do have enough VRAM to run said application. Since this is the first time I'm testing this chip out, I'm really interested in the TDP and this can definitely differ across different systems, so just keep in mind we're working with the GMK Tech K8 right now. I've got a CPU-Z right here, and I'm actually gonna set this up so we can see it a bit. We've got the GPU clock, CPU clock, and total package power right here. We're gonna run a stress test. Now it looks like we've got a boost up to 68, 
does drop down to 54 after a long period of time, so uh, keep that in mind. But while gaming, I mean, we're not going to boost up this high for that long, so we can keep around a 64 watt TDP here. Clocks looking good, 4.5, but we do need to add a little GPU into the mix because it needs to share all of this power with the iGPU. So what we're going to do here is put a load on that iGPU. We've got Furmark up and running. Up at the very top, we've got the clock for that 780M running at 2700 megahertz. That's what we need to be at. Pulling 55 watts, but right now we're really not hitting up that CPU. This is a more GPU intensive task here. So let's stress the CPU out at the same time. Right there, 68 watts. Again, it will drop back down. Clock's coming down on that iGPU, but so far, not bad at all. I mean, at this kind of wattage, we should be good to go. We can keep those maximum clocks on that 780M while we're gaming because we don't need to pull that much power with most of the AAA games we're going to be running from the CPU side of things. Looking really good the way they've got this set up. And the first thing I wanted to check out were some benchmarks. First up, we've got Geekbench 6, single core, looking phenomenal here with a 2,612, multi 13,214. I mean, this is definitely putting down some power and you can tell it is Zen 4 because we've got these really great scores for a mobile chip. And just to give you an idea here, I also went through and ran this on the Ryzen 7 7840HS, which is gonna be comparable, 65 watt TDP, Single core on that, 2,475, multi, 12,237. Now I wanted to check out some GPU performance with 3D Mark. Night Raid coming in with a 30,261. Fire Strike on the 8845HS, 7,396. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 3,158. Given the wattage here, it's falling right in line with the older 7000 series chips here. To tell you the truth, the highest score I've ever got out of the 780M was on the Ryzen 9 7948HX, and that was at a 90 watt TDP. With that, we scored 3300 with Time Spy, so we're not that far off here, and I'm sure upping this wattage would allow us to get or super exceed that score. Now it's time to do some PC game testing, and first up, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm just using the built in benchmark. And I actually wanted you to take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. Average CPU package power is around 62 watts. And as you can see, our GPU clock up top is at 2700 megahertz. So we don't need to boost up as high as we were with those extreme tests we were doing to keep those clocks up. And this really isn't that bad. 1080p, original settings, which does turn out to be medium. FSR set to balance. By the end of this benchmark, we had an average of 73 FPS. Next up, I wanted to test out Pal World. And I've done a lot of testing with this game on different mobile APUs. I find that 900p is kind of the sweet spot without any modifications because out of the box, Pal World doesn't have access to FSR. There are mods out there that will add FSR, but this is just kind of the vanilla game from Steam. At low settings, 900p, we average 64 FPS. So I do think a little more optimizations need to be had for this game. And if they really added FSR officially to the game, we could get much more out of this. Here's Modern Warfare 2, just using the built-in benchmark. We're at 1080p performance settings with FSR set to performance. We could definitely take some of these settings up because we had an average of 99 FPS the way it's set up right now. So going in here, I would probably just keep those performance settings and change FSR to balanced. I also wanted to test some fighting games, so here's Mortal Kombat 1, 1080p, low settings. Really good performance, and we can go to medium with some FSR, but I wanted to see what we could do here, and we're locked at 60. I also tested Street Fighter 6, that's one of those games that'll run at 1080p, medium, on the 780M. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings, no FSR, we got an average of 95 FPS, and this is really falling right in line with the other 780M powered, and this is falling right in line with the other APUs utilizing that 780M, and this is one of those games that just works really well on these APUs. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low with FSR set to performance. Usually I'm seeing kind of a higher frame rate here. Not exactly sure if it's the newer AMD driver or not. It's not far off from the other stuff that I've tested. We're usually around an average of 73 FPS. With this, we got an average of 69.
So when it comes down to it, there's no doubt that the GMK Tech K8 with that Ryzen 7 8845HS is a great performer given that we're only working with an iGPU. These Hawk Point chips from AMD aren't that far off from Phoenix Point, and what I mean by that is Ryzen 7000 with the RDNA 3 780M. You're not going to see a giant leap in gaming performance with this iGPU because we've got the same iGPU. Now on the CPU side of things, it does look like this is outperforming Phoenix Point by just a bit, but it might not be enough for somebody to upgrade from Phoenix Point if you've already got one already. Personally, the way I see it is if you can pick up a Ryzen 8000 for the same price that you could pick up Ryzen 7000, I would definitely go with 8000 just because we've got a newer chipset here. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video at the GMK Tech K8. I will have a couple more videos coming up. I definitely want to test this out with Linux. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the new Ryzen 8000 series APUs, let me know down below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.